Hello, this is Levin, Lesson 7-2, Solving Equations with Grouping Symbols. Again, this is a review of something you did earlier this year. However, there are a couple of new twists with different types of equations. So getting right to it, you should notice that you have 3 times the quantity m plus 22. That should key you into looking to use the distributive property. So we will use the distributive property. And you're left with 3m plus 66, and we'll, again, you'll use it on the other side, 4m plus 48. Now we look to move the variables to one side of the equation and the numbers to the other side. In this particular equation, I have 3m on the left-hand side of the equal sign and 4m on the right-hand side. In order to make life easier for us, we will move the 3m by subtracting it from both sides. And the reason we do this as noted from the last lesson, 4m minus 3m is positive m, which makes our lives a little bit easier. So now we have 66 equals m plus 48. And continuing to solve this, we would subtract 48 from, what's from both sides. And the question now is, because you're such advanced math students, what happens to the two 48s on the left, on the right-hand side? They cancel each other out. And you get m equals 16 minus 8 is 8, 5 minus 4 is 1. So we end up with the variable m equals 18. So this is, again, just a quick review of something you did earlier this year back in Chapter 3. The next board here, this slide, um, we have grouping, equation, grouping symbols on both sides of the equation plus the variables on both sides. So you should notice that we have some distributive property. So we get 5n plus 10 when we do that. And we didn't use anything else, so we'll just bring that down and keep it in the exact same place, keeping the order correct. So we need to simplify on the right-hand side, the 5n and the 2n. We can combine those. 3n plus 4 on the left. There's no change there. And on the right-hand side, 5 minus 2n is going to be 3n plus 10. Now, moving the variable stuff from the right to the left or the left to the right um, in order to make life easier for us is our next step. However, you should notice something. There is the variable and the coefficient are the same. So if we actually subtract 3n from both sides, moving the 3n from the right to the left, just because that's what we're commonly doing, we notice that 3n minus the 3n's on the right-hand side cancel each other out. However, the 3n's on the left, they also cancel each other out, which leaves us with 4 equals 10. Now, that's obviously not true. And if you were to go back and look at this equation and go through it step by step, you would notice that there's nothing wrong with it mathematically. However, this is what we end up with. This is, a, this is a new type of equation we're going to run into, and these do exist, because obviously we see one here with 4 equals 10. 4 does not actually equal 10, so this equation has no solution. There is no number for the variable n that will work to make this equation solvable. So we now have a new type of equation, no solutions. So you should be ready and looking for those types of equations. Next slide here, we have quite a bit of grouping symbols and variables on both sides. So getting right to it, we'll just do all the distributive property to begin with. So we have 2x minus 10 equals, didn't do anything with that 4x. We're actually going to distribute this negative 2 into both portions of the, in the problem to use the distributive property. So negative 2 times x is going to be negative 2x, so it still stays minus 2x. And now negative 2 times positive 5 is negative 10, so we'll make that a minus 10, as we looked at and learned earlier this year with our work with integers. So simplifying it, nothing really happens on the left, 2x minus 10 equals. And then we have the 4x minus 2x gives us 2x minus 10. Now, we can continue to simplify if you want, or we should notice that the left-hand side of the equation is identical to the right-hand side of the equation. Uh, we can, we'll simplify it. We'll add 10 to both sides. The 10s on the left and the right cancel each other. Now we have 2x equals 2x. 
if we divide both sides by 2, I get x equals x. This is another unique equation that you're going to run into. This equation is said to have an infinite number of solutions. And that's because no matter what number you pick for the variable x, it will always work. And you should have seen that up here when you had 2x minus 10 equals 2x minus 10, the left side equals the right side. And when that happens, no matter what you pick for x and put it in for both sides, you're going to multiply it by 2 and then subtract 10 on either side. So that's what's going to happen in that case. So we have three new types of equations. Well, in this lesson, there are three new types of equations. The first is solving and getting just a general variable, a general answer for the variable like m equals 18. And then there is the no solution type of example. And then finally, we have the infinite number of solutions. So you've got three new types of equations. Along with this, because we're grouping symbols, we're going to also see some perimeter and area problems. So you'll remember that the equation for perimeter is 2 times the length plus 2 times the width. So we will substitute in the information that we know. We are told in the problem the perimeter is 440. So we'll substitute that in for the variable p right there. We know that the length is 3 times the width minus 60. So we'll actually set up some distributive property for us. And then the width is still just the width, so that makes it easy for us, 2w. So now it becomes exactly like the problems we just solved on the previous boards. So we will use the distributive property, 6w minus 120 plus 2w. We will combine like terms, so you get 440 equals 8w minus 120. Now it's a simple two-step equation, so we will continue this by adding 120 to both sides. What happens to the 120s on the right-hand side? Of course, they cancel each other out, so that's going to be 660 equals 8w. So now we will finish the problem off by dividing both sides by 8. The 8s on the right-hand side cancel each other out. And we find out that the width is actually going to be this 82.5. So that's the width. You also have to find the length of this equation. So we actually have to find the length is equal to 3 times 82.5 minus 60. And going through, 82.5 times 3 is 247.5. And then if we subtract the 60 away from that, we find that the length is 187 and a half. So this is a problem in which you're given the perimeter and a variable for the width, and you're not told what the length is. So you have to end up going through and solving this one from the, from the reverse, which is what we've done in the past. So this is solving equations with grouping symbols on both sides of the equation. Again, work you've done so far this year. And your homework is page 337, 10 through 36, the evens.